today we, we've had a lot of folks that were interested in um, what you know what's going on with scuba how can they get engaged with scuba all that kind of good stuff so I'd also invited our uh, diving safety officer um, uh, I think he's out of town so he wasn't able to join us but um, Robert and I will talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to get uh, scuba certified and we'll talk for a bit and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, given that uh, our, our DSO isn't here. I'll talk a little bit about the, the AAUS research certification, and then we'll just open it up and you guys can uh, fire away your question, away your questions um, related to scuba. And so that's the, that's the plan for tonight. So, um, so to get going, uh, Robert, thanks for joining us. Very cool. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your history of how you, like your diving history, when you first started diving, all that kind of good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for having me on here. Uh, so, with probably 99% of most people, I've always wanted to scuba dive. Um, growing up, my parents were like, hey, you know, when you're on your own insurance, you can do what you want to go do. <laughs> but until then, so um, I took some classes at Ventura College, and they had a student insurance coverage. So I said, hey, I could take scuba through the college. Can I do that? So my dad said, sure, go for it. So that's what got me kind of started. Um, I did have an injury at work, so I wasn't able to complete the class because I twisted my ankles. So it took me a little bit longer to get back into scuba. Um, but when I did, uh, I haven't looked back since. And I'll tell you that everybody has their first aha moment on scuba. Some people have it their first dive. Some people have it, you know, 100 dives later. But my aha moment was I went to Santa Barbara Island. Mm -hmm. It's the smallest island uh, of our Channel Islands, and it's a sea lion rookery. I knew nothing about that when I was on the dive boat with my instructor. And we pulled up six o'clock in the morning and it looks like a mudslide coming down these hills and it's all these sea lions that I didn't know, but they hike 200 feet up cliffs to have their little homes. So they come out and now they're barking. It sounds like I'm in a dog kennel and they're all barking at the boat. And I'm like, what the heck do we get ourselves into? So we get suited up and we jump in and we have a, an anchor with a float and the instructor says, he just go down the line and we'll meet you at the bottom. So I start to go down the sea lions follow me. And when I exhale my bubbles, it exhaled some bubbles. I'm like, that's just, that's a coincidence. <laughs> so I'm continuing down, it's following me. I exhale again, it exhaled again. I'm like, no way. And when I, as I go down, it's, it's mimicking me the whole way down. And so I get down to the bottom. Now I'm on my knees on the bottom of the ocean and it sat next to me in the equivalent of on its knees with its hands out. I'm just like, that was like, the most awesome experience anybody could ever have. Um, and then I got the bug. I had a buddy with me that got certified the same, same time. I said, let's go diving the next weekend. He's like, oh, you know, this came up. So it took me like three weekends to finally get to go dive again after being certified. And it's like pulling teeth to find people. So I was like, I got to take another class or something to find more divers. So I took the advanced class, got more dive buddies. But I still, I want to go all the time. I mean, just that experience, and it's in our backyard. I mean, totally. You look at the ocean here in California, and it's dark and uninviting. That's a misnomer because as soon as you're underwater, it's this whole world that just opens up that is just amazing. And, and the experiences I, I hear from people that they've had, plus what I've had, phenomenal. So I ended up having to become a dive master just to keep me diving because as much as I want to do. So I was working with classes left and right. We had this company called Sport Chalet. They had 43 stores throughout California. I was going down to San Diego, helping with classes, going all over the place. So I got a good experience of diving all of California. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome. But you know what? I could probably do a little bit better as an instructor. So I did what I need to do to become an instructor been an instructor for 15 years. I actually just got my certificate from Patty saying congratulations, 15 years um, as an instructor. So that's cool. Um, I never wanted to own a shop. That was not my thing. But when Sportually closed and you know all their stores, um, these doors opened up that said, hey, you know what? Here's an air compressor. Here's some rental gear. Find a location. Which was and, about what? 12 years ago? 10 years ago? What, what was? Yeah, it's probably about 10 years ago because. Yeah. Um, Took me, it took me about two and a half years, three years to find a location. And I opened a shop actually right down the street from Channel Islands next to Big Brand Tires. Uh, we're in our sixth year of business and uh, we've certified over about 400 people. 
So awesome. Um, we're, we're diving. California is year round diving. It's not just summertime, things like that. Wintertime is actually the better time to dive because you get uh, better visibility, uh, a little bit cleaner water. Plus you got lobster season. So you're out there doing that too. Um, and then there's just so many experiences you know, like Catalina Island, um, I tell people that's the best representation of California diving, but it's not always like the best. So the best I like is I can park my car, let's say Malibu on the side of the road, go in, have an amazing experience, come out. It's like 9 a.m. and I got the whole rest of the day to do what I want to do, <laughs> but I'm all energized from the experiences I have in the water. So I love it. So a couple things uh, just to sort of get rid of some um... – assumptions I think some people have. So one, um, I think sometimes diving can have sort of a, a macho or James Bond kind of like, you know, super adrenaline kind of thing. And, and there can be great adrenaline, but it's not, it's not, um, you know, a Olympic athlete kind of type of thing, right? Yeah, it's actually very relaxing. Uh, I tell people the hardest part is actually getting in the water. But once you're in the water, you want your heart rate down, you want to relax. And actually, the slower you go, the more you see. I tell divers, the new divers, at the beginning, they see a lot of the big stuff, but they miss so much. I go, you could spend your whole dive on totally. one rock. Totally. And still not see everything on that one rock. Totally. So it, you just have to slow down. But then, you know, the big hurdle of new divers is they want to break that one hour underwater. And they every dive, they get closer and closer. And then I've had divers where it's like, could you hold your breath for 30 more seconds? You're almost there. And then once they break that hour, then they're like, oh, that's easy. So, but it's, it's real relaxing. Um, there's no cell phones, no computers. So you don't have, uh, you know, that kind of distractions when you're down there. But time does go by fast. I mean, I, I've had times where I'm videotaping an octopus that's interacting with me. And next thing I know, that was 45 minutes. It just went like that. Totally. Which is awesome. Totally. But, uh, yeah, super zen, very easy. And, and I would say also... Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to dive all over the world and, and, you know, like the single most sort of crazy mind blowing d diving is probably Antarctica under the ice where it's like a mile visibility, but hands down, like day in, day out, the best diving, just jumping off a boat and just any old afternoon, I think is the channel are the channel islands. I mean, I mean, truly it's, it's, I prefer that over coral reefs and over a bunch of stuff. It just is really amazing to be inside of a forest underneath the ocean. It's just really, really um, enveloping and, and, and welcoming and, and really cool and really cool. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about, um, so you've mentioned, and so what we're talking about for, for students that are maybe interested in getting involved in diving that haven't been, the very first step is to get certified. So tell us um, what that, so-called open water one, which is the first entry level certification. What, is, what does that mean? What does that take? How long does it take? That kind of stuff. So classes are, are actually quick when you think about it. Um, I do teach a little different. I don't do a weekend crash course because I don't believe in that. I believe in like a muscle memory and I want people to do this for a long term. So you basically are looking at two classroom sessions or you could do e-learning, which we get about 50-50 doing classroom they talk to us which i kind of prefer but we get the people doing the e-learning too uh, it's two pool sessions and unless there's some kind of difficulty somebody's having which is very rare then you'll go do four ocean dives and you're certified so you're looking at you know two classroom sessions two and a half hours each two pool sessions three to four hours each and then we do like two saturday morning dives uh, and people being certified and it's a lifetime certification and you can dive anywhere in the world and once you uh, and so folks understand, so the, the lessons are like the, the concepts, like you know, what, what's going on when you're underwater and that kind of stuff. And then the pool stuff first and then eventually back into the ocean is just getting you all familiar with how to physically make the um, items work and how to behave safely. And how does it work when you breathe, but yet your head's underwater and that kind of stuff. So so that's awesome. And then you mentioned and then if students are interested um, after, um, in the recreational diving world was what we're talking about here. Um, so there's open water one, and then there's these other additional certifications that would give you other opportunities to do, um, things like night diving and, and stuff like that. Do you want to mention any of those other sort of levels after open water one? Yeah. And let me mention something for, uh, open water. It's kind of like learning to ride a bike for the first time and you have to learn a balance. 
And so that's what we're really teaching you is how to balance underwater, how to conserve things, you know, and we have to understand there is pressure that's underwater and how does that affect us? If I go to hundred feet, I'm breathing four times as much air at hundred feet than at the surface. So those are just things that you have to know about um, for that. Every agency calls it advanced is the second level you go to. I actually call it open water too, yeah. because people in their mind say, well, I'm not advanced yet. I got four dives under my belt. I mean, the advanced class is actually the best thing to take right after because you went from a very little bit of knowledge to we crammed all this stuff into your head to get you underwater. By the time you're done with that, you probably forgot about half. Yeah. So the advanced class helps hone in. Hey, we're going to teach you to get to go to 100 feet. We're going to show you how to use your compass and navigate a 100 foot square. Um, we're going to do a little bit more peak performance buoyancy. And then you've got some specialties like some people do uh, a wreck diver. So it's an introduction to that specialty if you want to learn how to enter wrecks. Photography, how to do pictures. Uh, we just started doing the full face mask so people can talk underwater. So we have that certification as well. Um, and then there's just, it's almost endless when it comes to the specialties and then where you want to go. Um, I'm also on our sheriffs, so Ventura County Sheriffs. We have a search and rescue dive team. Um, so I'm on that dive team. Uh, I love helicopters. I love scuba diving and I'm able to do both. And I get to jump out of the county helicopter that we see fly over all the time for free, which is awesome. So there, there's a lot of doors that open being scuba certified that's not, you know, separate. So I'm, I'm actually on the campus right now. I'm a public safety officer for the police department. Um, so I work here till five o'clock and then I go open the dive shop and do that. So that's just a, an auxiliary. That's how, I can tell you it's my fun job is scuba yeah. diving. So. Yeah, totally. I mean, so this is like a great example of a lot of the things that we we do in ESRM that maybe maybe you guys aren't aren't sure if that's your jam. But, you know, I encourage you to check it out and and maybe it's not your jams. That's OK. But maybe you discover something that I really dig this. And and while you can get certified whenever and wherever, it's a lot easier when you have folks that are, you know, your own age and your own ability levels. And so just like Robert said, the key thing is, um, you know, when you learn to ride a bike, you got to you got to ride the bike a few times. Right. And if you just try it once and fall off, you're like, oh, I don't like it. You got to keep trying. And you're much more. What I found over the years, you're much more likely to to get that practice in if you're in a class with fellow students or fellow young people of, of your your age and your interest level, as opposed to sometimes we have classes where it's, um, you know, uh, two couple or a couple that's just got married or getting ready to go marry get married and they want to go dive in Mexico this summer and, and they're not really you know they have a very clear goal as to what they want to do but not necessarily you know look at the ecology or look at the systems or dive in the Channel Islands or something like that so finding a group of folks um, that's fantastic um, uh, and so I would I would encourage you guys if you're interested we'll open the uh, questions in a second you guys can start asking Robert questions but but so basically in addition to that We've just now, for the first time after years, I wish, I wish is Jamie's not here yet. Is Jamie here yet? Um, uh, uh, been trying. We have a scuba club. We've had a scuba club on campus for a long time, more than a decade. And, but they've, students in the scuba club are not allowed to do, we're not allowed to do scuba, which is like a brilliant uh, risk management thing. So just this last year, um, the campus gave their blessing. And so, um, and so starting this year, if you guys are in the scuba club, you guys can actually do officially do things using official school stuff. So instead of instead of just sitting around a room and talking about scuba diving, you guys can can actively engage in that with your fellow students. And that's awesome. That's another way to support each other and sort of get the bug and, and help one another uh, uh, going um, forward. Um, and then I'll just say uh, before I open up for questions, um, I'll let me just um, let's see if I can do this. I'll, I'll just show you guys real quickly um, the brief history of um, of this uh, crazy thing. So uh, the the technology of scuba uh, started with people doing construction in mines and in building bridges and stuff like that. And so late 1700s, people started messing with stuff. It got more and more sophisticated, but still with people walking on the bottom. Um, this kind of stuff, heavy boots and air coming from a pump on the, on the, in the air. So people couldn't go very deep. Um, and then in the early 1900s, a bunch of inventions, mostly centered in and around France, um, come along. And so, uh, uh, this, uh, Maurice guy, um, invents a way with a regular, 
what we would call a regulator now to actually have air coming in um, in a much uh, much more portable fashion. And that was great. Um, this guy sees it in 1925 at this fair and then says, hey, I can do something. And he uh, adapts it. And we get this um, uh, what what almost looks like a, a scuba and what we would now almost consider scuba, although it's not quite as sophisticated. And then um, uh, uh, the Nazis invade France and they want to control how gas is supplied. The gas is there isn't a lot of gas. So this guy, um, uh, this engineer invents an on demand regulator to have only the amount of natural gas come out that they that is needed to make the flame burn. And essentially, he, along with Jacques Cousteau, you guys have all heard of, adapt that to a scuba tank, and they make this first film in 1943, and then it goes like gangbusters. And then uh, scuba, uh, what we would call the Aqualung, or the first mo real modern scuba tank, portable, a tank on your back, with a first stage and a second stage, um, with, with a, with, which just has, refers to how we control the pressure. They start going, and it goes crazy. And one of the places where scuba goes crazy is right here in Southern California. And it just goes insane. It goes so insane, people realize that we need some kind of certification. So one of the first certifications in the world is actually here in Los Angeles. This is um, YMCA did a, a safety a safety diving uh, uh, thing starting in the 60s. And then from then from there, other organizations spun up that Robert was mentioning. And so that sort of that gave us the modern um, our modern um, uh, 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 diving uh, uh, world. So so in the 50s and 60s, anybody could just grab a scuba tank and go do whatever. Now you you need to show some evidence of certification to to rent a tank from a store or something of that nature. Um, that was going great. And that was all happening. People, uh, the, the, the guys that are doing this kind of stuff, though, um, were starting to get bummed out in the 70, 60s and 70s. are saying, like, what? All these scientists, uh, archaeologists, marine biologists kind of folks are out there doing stuff, and they're diving. But when we dive, when the guy's working on bridges or oil rigs or stuff like that, we're diving. They, there was all these um, layers of safety, having to have a decompression chamber, which is something that if you stay down too long or come up too fast and some – of the gases come out of your your blood it's a way to sort of treat that they had to have all that stuff and and um they said how come these scientists are getting you know federal dollars research dollars and they're just putting on a tank and, and snorkeling around so we should u.s government you should stop funding all this underwater science and so these guys got together m most of which were here in california and especially in southern california scripps and ucla and in these areas and they said went to Congress and they said, no, 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 that's not, um, we don't like that. Uh, in fact, you will kill all this great research we're doing. Let us police ourselves. Let us as a professional research community um, uh, set some standards and we will uh, create a, a third party organization, which is now known as the American Academy of Underwater Sciences. We'll create this thing and we will police ourselves. And then if we have a lot of accidents or people die or get sick or hurt or whatever, then you can come in OSHA and regulate us as if we were a commercial uh, diving operation, as if we were building an oil rig or something. But until that time, let us, can we just keep doing what we're doing? And so Congress said, okay, that's fine. And that's, and we've lived under that policy. So, so what Robert's talking about is the introductory stuff. Everybody has to go through that open water one, that first thing. But then if you're interested in doing research with us, you can come and get certified um, uh, through, through our university organization, which is a member of the American Academy of Underwater Sciences. We have what's known as a diving safety officer. Uh, we share one and a half diving safety officers with all the other CSUs in the greater Los Angeles area. And, and so we essentially um, do additional, just like uh, we were mentioning there about like advanced diver, it's kind of like doing an advanced diver course. Um, and in addition to that, we also uh, have a similar type of thing for uh, safely operating boats called MOTC certification. So, so those are all cool certifications, but the key to all this, the very first step is getting your open water one and getting some friends and just going and diving. So um, that's a little bit about uh, diving here. I think uh, I think I've been talking a lot. I think we're going to open it up and see if you guys have any questions uh, for us uh, or for Robert about about cost or logistics or or any of that kind of good stuff. So feel free to uh, unmute and uh, and ask us some questions, you guys. I had a question. Yeah. So I was wondering what days do like the classes take 
like take on? Take place, you mean? Yeah, take place. So, so most dive shops, they're going to post a schedule and then they're going to try to get people to go on that schedule. Um, especially with COVID, what we did is we actually build a class around each individual person. So we don't post schedules. Um, as an example, we try to do any classroom stuff during the weekdays. So some people could come in on Monday and do one of the classrooms or they could come in on Thursday. Um, we really do pool session like on a Thursday evening or we do Saturday afternoons. And most of all of our dives are Saturday mornings. So we usually will meet at the back of our dive shop we go dive. Um, when staff comes back, then we get set up. We'll go to the pool with another group. Um, and then we, when we're diving, we might have people doing their first ocean dive as well as people doing their last ocean dive and getting certified the same day. So people get to see more people and get more experiences um, with what's going on with diving. And that seems to be very easy. It's not hard to um, have to reschedule. You don't have to pay makeup fees, stuff like that. So we've been real flexible. Sweet. Thank you. And I'm going to put my contact in the uh, yeah, chat. Do. So if you want yeah, uh, my email. Also, uh, we have a YouTube channel that we post a lot of stuff on. So if you want to see like diving Catalina, you know, we do beach dives, things like that. Uh, we're one of the few shops that actually do almost all of our certifications for open water are beach dives. So people don't just get one dive under their belt. They get a lot of dives under their belt. And then they tend to do more beach diving because that's what California really is, is, is beach diving. Um, it's nice if you go on a boat, go to Anacapa, go to Santa Cruz, take the Catalina Express boat to Catalina. There's a dive park there that's, a, that's amazing. I love that place. Um, but there's nothing that just beats parking your car, go in and have a great time diving. And um, you have the rest of the day to do what you want to do. Awesome. Other questions? What are like the associated costs with this or like average costs? Yeah. So I usually tell people that for the price to go snow skiing for a weekend, you could be a scuba, you could be scuba certified for life. Um, we charge four ninety nine for the, the class, which that includes the rental equipment, the workbook or e-learning. Um, the only thing it doesn't include is a boat. If you want to go on a dive boat or the basic equipment, which we say is your mask, fins, snorkel, boots and gloves. Um, we want that to be something that's kind of, you own it, um, that range about $250. Um, we are on the dolphin discount program. So we do give a discount to everybody from Channel Islands as well. Um, but we're trying not to make it to where we're pricing people out of this sport. Um, I've seen shops that are charging a thousand dollars for tuition only, and then it goes up from there. Um, that's not helping the sport and we need more divers that, you know, want to keep diving and, and enjoy it. So. We, we do things a little bit different with our shop. Um, so we try to keep those costs down and pass those on to everybody. And wherever you guys get certified, they're going to require you to have a mask and snorkel and, and fins that, that that's, you know, that's your customizable thing. And the other parts as, as uh, Robert was mentioning, the other parts are typically in a class that that's part of the class costs you rent them. And then the idea is if you dig it, then you can think about purchasing your own, or you can also just rent those things. If you don't want to purchase your own, you can always, dive shops will also rent the tank itself. And then what's called the buoyancy compensator, the vest like thing you wear and, and the hoses and stuff. So that stuff is all rentable. Um, we're also, uh, if we, it, it's, it's sort of a different world now that we, that scuba club can actually encourage. So, so up to now we get like one or two students a year, from Channel Islands, one or two students a year, they get research certified. And that's not enough for us to, to run a research program. So I would always send those kids to Northridge or to UCSB or something like that to start helping out with those folks. But now that it looks like we're, we can have this nice pipeline of recreational divers and then some small subset of those folks might go on to be uh, AAUS certified divers. There's a ton of projects I, I would like to start up and um, would be great to start up. Um, that that jump in cost though usually when you go to the research diving usually you guys get your own uh, gear you have your own gear um and uh and so we're also interested in pursuing uh, ways to help you guys out with those costs and if jamie was here she would mention that there's different programs to help defray the cost um for folks to get into the the activities of diving even if you don't have um you know as much money to buy all the equipment the the entry level price is, is usually um you know fairly easy in a comparison but but going full bore is that that's where some of the extra cost comes in 
Um, and, and we're interested in, in seeing how we can defray those costs for you guys. Maybe we buy several sets of lab gear or something like that, and, and you guys can use that stuff. And one of the things with California is that if you get certified in California, you can dive anywhere else in the world, and it's actually easier than California. It's very hard to come back to California if you don't get certified here. So we get a lot of people that want to come dive with us. Um, they really struggle going through the surf zone because a lot of places don't have the waves that we do. The biggest thing is, is most places you're not wearing this thick wetsuit and you're not wearing so much weight. And if you already start off day one using all that, then it's super easy to dive here in California because that's the way you were trained. And it's the people that get certified in Hawaii, they come back and they, they actually struggle in California. Um, and it's, it's sad to see because they'll go on a dive boat. If you go on a dive boat anywhere else in the world, it's all dive master led and they're going to tour you. If you go on a dive boat here, they'll take you out to the island and they'll say, okay, dice, dice sites open, go ahead. And they're like, well, who's going to lead the dive? And they don't do that. You're on your own. So those are things like if you certified in California, you're already aware of it and it's easy and you'll manage that. Um, but if you get certified somewhere else, it's harder to come back. And I've, I've worked with a lot of different dive or I've been associated or seen a lot of different dive shops over my um, career. And um, I would just say, I wouldn't always necessarily recommend uh, folks entering the sport necessarily go to some of these dive shops. Um, as, as we were just mentioning, sometimes people charge a lot of money and sometimes people are really motivated to get you certified super quick because then they want to sell you the, expensive equipment and all that kind of jazz. Um, uh, uh, you want to find a guy like Robert here, who's interested in safety, inter you know, works, works in, in the safety world, helps out with search and rescue on the weekends. Like that's the kind of person you want teaching you. Um, not that other people are bad necessarily, but sometimes they have other motives um, in terms of uh, what they're trying to get done. Um, and not everybody is like, Hey, just want to make sure you guys are are calm and chill. And if it's not working out, that's cool. You know, we'll come back next weekend and work on it. You know, that that's the kind of person you want as a, as an instructor, um, in this type of world. Other questions. Uh, uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah. I wanted to ask since I was a little late, uh, getting into the zoom, was there anything like, uh, really necessary, you know, that might need to be filled out or signed up for right now that was discussed during the zoom meeting? That I could quickly get on. Oh, you guys. Uh, so, so uh, maybe, maybe uh, Robert, you can re-put your contact in just in case somebody joined late and it didn't come in or they missed that part of the chat. But um, yeah, no. So, so we're just talking about the general options for you guys. And so, um, if you're interested in uh, in getting certified locally, um, that's that's Robert just put his uh, email address again in the uh, contact, and that's uh, his business uh, here in you know local right next to campus. And so. Um, so you guys could reach out to him, but no, we, we're, we're not, it's not like we have like a specific date we're suggesting everybody goes to. For, for folks that are interested in the AAUS certification, you have to first have an open water one. So you would first, you know, reach out to Robert, get that, get that done, do a few dives. We require you to have 12 dives before you, um, before you do the research certification. And our AAUS research certification happens three times a year. We have a class in, in, in winter time, and then we have a class sort of early summer and a class in late summer. Uh, and so, um, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll put the information on in the uh, chat in a second. Uh, the, most of the stuff is the same in terms of our, to, to, to do the, um, the research certification. Uh, uh, the difference is we also require a scuba physical. Um, and with most open water one, most recreational diving, they suggest a physical, but it's not required unless you have some specific health concern. Um, but for research diving, you have to do it. And that's, um, and so that's usually an extra, you know, like 150 bucks or something like that. Um, sometimes our medical insurance will cover it, but not necessarily always. Um, and so, uh, and then, and then uh, the, the research certification class is, um, it's about a two week period. And so, uh, we typically do a little bit of stuff in the on the mainland, but then the bulk of it is done um, for our class out at Catalina Island, so out at out at USC's Marine Lab. Um, in terms of doing more diving, it's just essentially a, a refresher of all the stuff that you'd learn in in your class with Robert, 
and then uh, just a little more, um, a little more um, stuff about how, how we do different kinds of transects and things like that underwater. Cool. Other questions? I have um, another one. Please. I was just wondering if, because I wear glasses, so do you guys have the masks that are like prescri like prescriptions or whatever? Yeah, there's a couple ways to do that. There's actually a company in San Diego that'll do your exact prescription with any mask. Um, some of the manufacturers, you can um, get an insert, like let's say you're negative 1.5 but they won't do a negative 1.25. So depending on how close you are with something, you, the manufacturer might have that available. Otherwise you could go to this company and they can make your exact prescription for you. Uh, a lot of times okay, people, thank you. I, I wear glasses, as you guys know, like just around and you know all the time and I've worn glasses since I was, I don't know, like a little, little kid. Um, uh, underwater, I don't work, I don't, I don't do my prescription. Um, and, and that's because stuff underwater is a little bit magnified. And so for me, my eyes aren't so bad that that's, that's enough. Another friend of mine that um, I first learned to dive with, he um, wears uh, eyeglasses all the time. So he, he'll either wear contacts inside his mask or he'll, he will, um, he has a pair of like, like we're talking about, like a custom, custom uh, lenses glued into the inside of his mask. Um, very common, very common. Yeah, we'll get students that have that have uh, contacts in and we do a couple skills like just flood your mask to, to learn how to do that. We'll tell them keep your eyes closed. Um, I keep my eyes closed anyways when I do it, anyway, but we'll tap them on the shoulder when their mask is clear. So there, there's a lot of options and it, it usually is not uh, anything too crazy. Stephen just asked, what's the cost for open water? Is he got disconnected when you were talking about the price for your for your shop? So we charge four ninety nine. Um, that includes either the workbook if you want to do the classroom version or the e-learning if you want to do all that virtual. Um, that'll include the two pool sessions and the four ocean dives and the certification card. That also includes the rental equipment. Um, we, we say there's 10 things. There's personal equipment, mask, fin, snorkel, boots, and gloves. You should have those of your own. And then there's five things for the scuba equipment. That's your wetsuit with a hood, BCD, tank, weights, and a regulator system. Cool. Other questions? Anybody have any other uh, things you're wondering about or curious about? And I'm curious about. Oh. All right, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> can you talk more about the the uh, boat safety certification? Uh, yeah, I can. So that's that's um, that that's. Gonna be, I just threw up that page. Uh, the uh, so also a little bit of an explainer for you guys. So that link. It's, it's www.scmi.net so, uh, slash OSI. We, CSUCI, we're part of, so our Southern California CSU, uh, or our Los, greater Los Angeles area CSUs are all part of a, of a shared entity, and it's called the Ocean Studies Institute. We, in turn, are a part of, a, of another group and we are by far the vast majority of people in it, but but that other group includes us plus UCLA, USC, um, Loyola Marymount, Pepperdine, and Occidental. And together, all of us are known as the Southern California Marine Institute. So that's what that website is for, the Southern California Marine Institute. We have a bunch of large vessels, small vessels uh, based in San Pedro. And so, so um, uh, along on that page, or if not on that page, I'll, I'll look in a second and, and drop the link in. It's... Um, uh, motorboat operator training certificate, MOTC. So just like I mentioned the brief history of, of how we got to this, this um, professional organization called the AAUS, the American Academy of Underwater Sciences. Um, uh, we, a, a similar thing has sort of burbled up in the last few years. Now, if you have a boat, you can, you can um, get safety trained from the US Coast Guard. You can, and depending on the size of the vessel, you have to get a license to operate, you know, a vessel of a certain size. So we, we have had those, those sort of um, standards uh, for some time, right? Um, but mostly what we're using as, as scientists, as, as researchers, are um, a series of small boats. So either a raft like Zodiac type thing, um, or something like a, a Boston Whaler, very common, which is maybe a boat like, let's call it 12 to 20 feet in, in length. 
um, or something a little bit larger. And so for those, some of those smaller ones don't require some of the US Coast Guard uh, uh, certification officers, like a 12 pack license or some of these other things, um, or six pack license. Um, uh, and so, uh, but it was recognized that these are, these are oftentimes what we use as research uh, divers or as archeologists or as marine biologists or whatever. And so, so this, this is sort of a, um, surprisingly, because we've had boats for much longer than we've had scuba diving, um, this is a relatively new phenomenon. And so it's, it's, um, it's a three-day course. And the first day is mostly pool session where we just make sure everybody can swim and we talk about how we haul people in a, in a swimming pool situation. Like how do, we, how do we haul someone with a life jacket you know, off, off the side of the, you know, uh, uh, onto the deck and things of that nature. And then the next couple of days are just essentially learning how to drive boats around. So how do you how do you start a um, you know a, a pull cord outboard? Um, how do you what, what's the proper way to, to secure a boat? What's the proper way to lay out an um, anchor and pull it in, etc. And so um, and that that's our MOTC course, and that is that happens um, more variably than the AUS because it's smaller and it's only a couple of days and and you know it's it's a lot more variable. It, it it can fit in a lot more schedules. Whereas the our research certification, we need a lot of dive masters assistance, and so it's a, it's a much more challenging logistic situation. And so that's why we have very specific times that we offer the AUS. Essentially, with the MOTC, as soon as there's demand, uh, we'll we'll run a class. And so what we're considering doing, I, I was hoping our our DSO would be here today to. Um, answer some of these questions but what we're hoping is uh you know we're getting ready to hopefully take a, a large class to lahaina um in january uh we were already planning our regular relatively small class but because of the disaster we're going to be bringing folks there and the harbor itself is a bit still damaged um the harbor of lahaina where we typically go out or our boats go out um and so uh just to give a little extra level of safety we're considering, um, you know, trying to have a, a do one of those MOTC courses here in Channel Islands Harbor in late November, early December for those of us around that, that might be interested in going in the class, just so that everybody it wouldn't be required. You don't necessarily drive a bunch of boats all day long or anything, but but just to sort of give that extra level of safety so that even if you're not driving the boat, you, you know how to tie it up and you know how to behave safely uh, in and around uh, these vessels. So. Um, so uh, I don't I don't know if we have a date for the next official you know generic one, but we're trying to get our own. Like I said, in in about uh, two months uh, up here. Other questions. So kind of surprised nobody's mentioned anything about uh, sharks or jaws or anything like that. <laughs> uh, usually that's the number one question that people ask about, uh, and I always have to tell a little story. So. My parents had a pool in our backyard. I was in that pool probably every day. And then when Jaws movie came out, I saw it and it kind of woke me up a little bit. I couldn't go in the pool anymore by myself. Somebody else had to be in the pool with me because Jaws is going to come out the drain and, and get me. <laughs> so when I became a scuba certified, you know, I go underwater and, you know, you're not going to see anything that big unless you're going places that's, that's what they cater to because we're real loud I and mean, we don't hear it ourselves but we sound like darth vader underwater um, so big stuff's going to stay away from us for that uh start doing night dives and then somebody always has to start singing the jaws theme at night um, <laughs> but as soon as you go underwater all that goes out of your way and you just have this amazing thing i actually feel like the paparazzi sometimes because i'll see like a big black giant sea bass and i'm taking pictures just like a paparazzi um but it's so cool and you know and then just you see this fish that's bigger than you down there and it's just like that's so awesome and they could okay. care less about us i mean they're they're like hey how's it going you know so it's a great time down there and um there's very few things that that decide they just want to try to bite you you know um usually it's the people that are kind of doing something you know poking prodding things like that they get a reaction just like you would a dog you know on land and stuff um, but like Santa Barbara Island, also Anacapa Island has a little sea line mercury. When you go there, it's like you're, you're in a dog kennel with a bunch of puppies and they just want to play and play and play. <laughs> and it's so fun. Yeah. I mean, one of the first, so my wife got certified, um, 
in in college as well and she went to school in san diego and i went down one time with her when she was doing one of her like last bit of her checkout dives and um i borrowed a, a weight belt that wasn't i just i didn't bring a weight belt because i used to take the train down so i was trying to not take a lot of weight and i didn't i didn't secure my weight properly and we're and this was a place called the point loma kelp bed so it's a little bit offshore so you have to kind of kick out for you, you go in the beach and then you go on your back and you you kick you 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 know kick on the surface out for a while and then you get there then you put your put your regulator in then you go down and do your diving and on the way out i was like twisting and twisting and twisting and uh i spun around and i was right in front of a uh, a sea lion I was like what the hell and so i always remember that one of that when those early dives when this sea lion was like what the hell is this weird thing thrashing around and i was like blah 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 and he was behind me the whole time just checking me out um cool stuff i'd say another one of the neatest things in the world ever so a couple uh folks in coastal management uh last day or so we're asking or we talked about red tides briefly um, red tides are one of the most awesomest things in the world to go diving in. I mean, it, it is totally, I haven't, I, I don't know how to describe it until you guys go do it. But if you guys ever saw, um, Fantasia with Mickey Mouse and he's kind of going like this and what whipping his hands up and all these kind of sparkly kind of magic dust, that's exactly what it looks like. Every time the water is disturbed, these dinoflagellate or these little phytoplankton, they, they bioluminesce. And it's not like, it's not like if you see it from land, it'll look like a glow it's not a glow it's a thousand million teeny tiny pinpricks of light so you you can see your hand because it's all glowing you can put your hand through the water and you see where your hand went through the water just super super mind-blowing like robert said you don't have to be swimming everywhere you can just sit there like right underneath the boat and for like an hour just be super entertained it is the coolest thing yeah i would go and i'd do this with my hands and get it built up and then like throw it at the other divers that's so cool uh, there's a few times where we're diving and actually we need lights because just swimming stirred it up enough that it was bright enough that that was lighting up everything around. That's pretty cool. Super cool. Awesome. Uh, let's see other uh, question. Oh yeah. So then, and then uh, uh, Robert just threw in, uh, we also have a, a one thing we, I would recommend for anybody that's, that's thinking about doing uh, open water one um, is to get uh, what what's in the most recent thing in the chat there, which says uh, divers alert network. Um, that is a uh, diving insurance um, uh, uh, outfit. They're both a diving safety entity, but they also um, generate, uh, uh, um, you, you can, there's different levels you can get that'll cover you in case you, you know, something happens, both, both uh, you know, to take care of you if anything were to go wrong, but also if you're traveling, it's also traveler insurance. And they, they have a, um, they're based out of Duke in North Carolina, and they do a lot of really, really wonderful research in terms of safety, both like like life threatening safety, but also just comfort safety. And hey, what's the best way to do this? And what, what's the most uh, you know easiest way to clear your ears when you have pressure and stuff like that? And so it's a fantastic organization and a great help. Um, one of the things that we use is we use their um, uh, they have a, an oxygen safety course. One of the one of the sort of uh, medicines you can apply if someone is not well after a dive is is pure oxygen to help pull out some of the the nitrogen gas and stuff and so they have a um a very well regarded course that's become the standard across the world as far as how you um administer uh, emergency oxygen to people so um awesome well uh so super happy to answer any more questions but it sounds like we're getting near the end anybody else have any last uh, questions they wanted to to pop off to us I have one. Um, sure. You you talked about how you um, help send students to other universities to aid them at, to support them with like research mm -hmm. and diving. Did those students have their their their? Did they complete the research course of the diving, or was open water enough? Yes. Yeah, so no. So just to be clear, so to do anything, to do any official work that of any entity that gets federal monies. Um, you have to be AUS certified. So, so all of them uh, got their open water one, but then you have to get, uh, so for recreational and fun, by no means you have to do that. that. That's enough. And you can, you can just stay there and have a great old time. But if you do want to do research, you need the AUS certification. And so, um, so as long as you're certified with one organization, it, it's just, just like uh, uh, we we're talking about with the regular open water certification one, that once you're in, you're good. The same thing with research diving. Um, the only difference is uh, the first level that you're certified with our 
research uh, diving certificate is you're only allowed to go to 30 feet, and which is really shallow. And then after you've done 12 dives to about that depth, then you get certified to 60 feet. And then, and then once you do about 12 dives to that depth, you can be certified to 90 feet. So, so we have a, we have a depth, a depth, um, uh, uh, level of, of approval. And then, so if you're certified at 60 feet and you wanted to go work at UCSB, you would just talk to the person at UCSB and you talk to our diving safety officer, our diving safety officer would, would, would write a letter and say that, yeah, Steven is, is a diver in good standing with our dive program and blah, blah, blah. And because we have this, this AUS, this third party entity, everybody has to follow the same rules. You can have additional training. Maybe maybe you're in Alaska and you do ice diving, so maybe you have some additional safety things. Um, and so there might be there might be add-ons, but everybody does all the same basic stuff. So everybody that goes through any AUS program—Hawaii, Florida, California, Michigan, uh, New England, wherever—we know that everybody's safe and everybody can can operate um, in a responsible manner. And so that's all you need. Cool. Any other ones before we wrap up? Um, I have a quick question. So yeah. for the AAUS, I'm already scuba certified. Mm -hmm. So for the AAUS uh, certification class, is mm -hmm. that something that's like already scheduled in advance that I could uh, potentially join? Or is that something based on yes. how much yeah, training so there is? Yeah. So, so just to be clear, when I say class, that's a class of, it's not a, like for credit at CSUCI class, it's a, it's an accreditation course. So it would be the equivalent of like calling up Robert's shop and going to a shop. We just do it in house. So that's what I said. It's it, it typically three times a year, winter break, early summer, late summer. So one of those links I put in here, uh, I'll repost it in case you guys, um, in case you guys join late. So this link here, if you go to there, there's information on there and there's an application. And so if you're interested, Dylan, what you just do is, is get that sucker, um, fill it out. And again, you'll need a scuba physical and there's a, the forms are, when you scroll down, there's a link about the application. The form is in the, is in the um, application. Just sort of get that together and uh, reach out, send an email to um, our DSO. All, the, all that stuff is, his email and stuff, everything's on that webpage. And just say, hey, this is who I am. I'm, I'm at CSUCI. I'm interested in, in attending the next um, uh, AUS training. Uh, and then he'll say, send me an application. And then you can just get the application together and send it in. Um, uh, and, and, but, but emailing him now and just letting him know that he'll be like, oh, okay, cool. So we're definitely gonna, every once in a while, like, especially during COVID when we couldn't do stuff, we didn't run classes as frequently, but as long as he knows there's a, a minimum of, uh, I forget what the minimum is eight, eight students or something, eight or nine students, um, then we'll definitely run the class. And so if you just let him know, he'll put you on the list and he'll know to, to reach out to you and stuff when we start getting closer. Um, and I just note that there's an inside rate. All of you qualify for the inside rate. We also have an outside rate that would be for like Aquarium of the Pacific or other other organizations that aren't part of our research because not all universities have this as an as a training option. And so some people have to come to us from like a state agency or somewhere else. So just to be clear, you guys only pay the you guys only pay the inside rate for um, for the class or, or the boating class or the or the AUS class. OK, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Any, any other last ones, you guys? All right, maybe maybe Robert, you can throw your email in there one more time, just just in case you get somebody joined late. And uh, I su I super encourage you guys to to you know consider this uh, if you're even slightly thinking about it. Reach out to Robert, join our scuba club, the student student event, um, the student activity club. Uh, come talk with me in office hours, and uh, uh, really hoping that we we get a cadre, a lot of cool stuff. One of the things I'm really hoping if we get enough people certified. Um, we are just taking, uh, we're just putting into public holder, holding um, the largest chunk of the California coast between Point Conception and Mexico that was in private hands, which is a two mile stretch of PCH um, near Deer Creek. And I really want to start both subtitle monitoring as well as aerial with drones and, and, and land based um, monitoring. But for our underwater kelp monitoring which is a very short kick out from the from the beach very very easy 20 minute drive from school um but i can i can only take folks that are research certified for that so once we get a cadre of folks um love to start digging into that project with with you or any of your your colleagues so 
Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. This is a great do drop. Let's let every unmute and, and give Robert a big round of applause for staying late for all you guys, not going to the shop and hanging out here. And and awesome. All right. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll have a, our next one will probably be next week. Um, most likely Harry Shearer, but um, we'll see. Well, I have to work out the details, but we'll have something going on. So um, hope you guys had a good time. Have a great evening. Um, and I will see everybody either in class or around school super soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Robert. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.